When it came to finishing ambitious projects, I did a much better job as a student than I did after graduation, where I worked on my own personal projects. By the time I graduated, I had a lot more freedom and time under my belt. I had the skills to animate, to produce, but what am I missing? What's preventing me from finishing these things with ease? Hey guys, it's Siviko Patoa, and someone asked me a question regarding independent animation production. And if there was something in the process that's often overlooked, underestimated, and not many people talk about. And when I think about my past projects, the ones that I managed to finish, the ones that I didn't finish, I can think of one big one. And it's not something that's art related, skill related, or even mindset related. It's really just organization and bookkeeping. So what do I mean by that? It's things like categorizing, it's organizing your files in order, it's figuring out a naming convention, scheduling, etc. The way I want to think about is that imagine you're actually running a team and you want to start distributing shots and tasks to other artists and other talented individuals. How would you go about that that makes their life and your life easier? So I want to do a little compare and contrast with projects that I had a hard time finishing or didn't manage to finish and projects that I managed to finish and had a smooth time with. Now, the first one I want to talk about is the Dusk's Flight short. And for those who are familiar with this channel, it took me years to finish because I kept quitting it, coming back to it, quitting it, and coming back to it. And then always changing my mind on something, being a perfectionist, made me redo a lot of work again and again. But, you know, that's not all of it. A part of it is due to a lack of organization skills. Earlier on, I was just animating some cool shots related to the project related to Pitch Bible I wrote years ago, and I would then later edit it all together in one cohesive trailer. So I didn't really have a proper foundation to work with. I didn't really have a fully functional animatic. I didn't really know how many shots there were, how many there were left. I was just winging it as I went. And of course, there's a place and beauty for this, but let me show you a bit of my file names for these projects because they were kind of atrocious. I kind of had this makeshift system where the file names were based on the character that's starring in the shot and context of what they were doing in that shot. And something like this would work if they were just one-offs and they didn't really have to be cohesive or consistent with every other thing. But it got a lot trickier when some shots had to be before and after another shot. And of course, the only thing I had to work with was just the descriptions I gave myself for these file names. So I would spend way more time trying to find the right file to work with and trying to find the right version because again, when I made different versions of these files, they weren't labeled as version one or version two. It was just basically just scene one, copy, copy, and things that just didn't make sense. And something like this made it so much difficult to work with because I didn't really know where to continue where I left off. I didn't know how to prioritize things and I ended up just getting lost with it. And not only that, some of these animation project files were in different folders, so they didn't really share the same folder. Some of them were in folders outside of the actual production name. Some files were in a completely different drive. So it just made things a lot more chaotic. I'll discuss how I salvaged this a bit later on in the video, but for now, I want to show some more examples that gave me trouble due to the lack of organization and bookkeeping skills. Now, the Dream Bandit's Proof of Concept trailer and the City of Secrets comic book trailer that I did for Victoria Ying kind of had the same issue. The file names were based off who was starring in it and a word or two to summarize the context of the scene. Not necessarily scene number, scene labels, etc. And as you know by now, it gave me issues. Now, the only difference between City of Secrets and the Dream Bandit's Proof of Concept compared to an older version of the Dusk's Flight trailer that I did was that I already had a fully made animatic that I could work off. The timing was there, the shots were there, I can kind of determine how many shots there were and the layout for animation. I had a clear end goal with this project. I already had a foundation. So that's the thing that helped me finish this project, knowing how to end it. But I think I would have had a much better time if I had a proper naming convention that was orderly and easy to track. So when I came back to Dusk's Flight, I knew I had to finish it. So I had to form a foundation I can work off of so that I know where it ends. So I quickly boarded out how I wanted the Dusk's Flight short to play out. Some missing scenes, some featured scenes already, just have an animatic of it with rough storyboards, just so that I know how many shots there are, what to expect for each shot, and then dividing them into animation project files. So for this one, because every sequence was scattered and I did work that was in between those existing sequences, I just came up with a makeshift naming conventions that was still in order, that was still easy for me to track. 
So there's several new sequences, and for each of those sequences, I would give a basic name of them. I would organize each shot as numbers and then just work off of there. And this made it so much easier for me to track the order of the shots, the remaining shots, and if I needed to send out a shot to someone that could help me finish the project, it just makes the quality of life better for both of us. So even if it's not perfect, a little bit of order helps a ton. And at the end of the day, I did finish the project because of this new approach to file naming and file organization. But the organization stuff isn't new to me. In fact, when I look back at my student films, I organize my shots based on number. For backgrounds and animatics, I save them in a separate folder, but even that, I would have different versions of those different files. Even though the naming convention here isn't perfect, it allowed me to sort of see how many shots there are, what shots need to be done, and if I wanted to look for a specific shot, I can just look for it based on the number. Now, after Dusk's Flight, I set out to do some really goofy shorts, and for those goofy shorts, I made animatics of those. Storyboards. And by the time I felt like animating them, I would convert each shot from the storyboard into a separate movie file or a separate folder. And this allowed me to see how many shots there were and make separate folders for those shots. Now, as you can see here, I've placed each animation file in the respected folder based on the shot number. And even when I export animation images or animation footage from that animation file, I save it based on the layer. As as you can see, I label my layers A, B, C, D. It's based on the anime production where A is the first layer and the most bottom layer. And as you go higher, it becomes B. Then a layer on top of that, it's C. So when I bring it into a compositing program like After Effects, I know which layer goes over the other when I import the animation. And I will tell you now that simple organization stuff like this, I finished projects much sooner than I expected. A project like what you're seeing only took me a few weeks. Even though the animation style was a bit looser and cruder and rougher, the fact that my files were a lot more organized made the production so much more smooth. So if you want to think more about your bookkeeping or organization skills for your projects, whether it's animation, whether it's comics, here are some food for thought that I can share. So think about how you're going to organize your folders. On my computer drive, I have folders for video games. I have folders for documents, NDAs, tax related documents, but I have a main projects folder and this is where my creative work goes into. So I have a folder that just consists of illustration work. I have a folder that has writing material like scripts, pitch Bibles, etc. I have a folder for YouTube. I have a folder for comics, you know, graphic novels and comics is something that I've been thinking about getting into. And of course, animation, because that's what I usually do. And in this animation folder, I have a bunch of animation projects, each having their own little folder. And in this project folder, this is where I have folders that build up the project. So I have a folder for animation shots. This is where all my animation project files go into PSDs, PNGs, or TGAs of background files that I can use later on for compositing. I have a folder for storyboards. This is where the animatic goes into, and this is where shots are divided. I have a folder for art references, so this is stuff like character design design, other reference material, a folder for renders and edits, so animation tests, test screenings, a screening of the project so far, etc. You could make a folder for sound and music that you're going to use for the project. You could make a folder where artists can drop their work. This is if you're already working with a team. A folder for tools and presets, so an example of this would be brush packs that you want to reuse for this project. And of course, composite files because this is where I put my After Effects files, and After Effects is a program that I use where I combine the animation, the backgrounds, and the colors all together to form a final render. And again, it depends on the project. So if the animation is, let's say, a 3D animation, maybe have a folder for CG models or CG sets. And even if it's not animation, it could be comics, it could be something else. Form a system that's easy for you to comprehend, to use, and to organize stuff. It'll be easier for you to track files, and if you want to send out work to other artists to help you out on stuff, this is ideal. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to think about is the naming convention. Instead of naming your files like this is my final version dot slash final copy slash truly final dot JPEG, you could come up with something that's more organized. So here's an example. My project is called Bork House Episode 1, but down below, I'm going to make an abbreviated version that's shortened BHEP01. And here's an example for the animation shots. I have the project name, underscore the shot number, underscore the layer sequence number, and the image sequence, underscore the version. So here's an example. 
bhf01 underscore s009, meaning shot nine, a001, a being the layer, 001 being the frame. So frame one, and depending on how long your animation is or how many drawings there are, it could end at a certain number, underscore the version type. And I'm just going to write another example for a different scene and a different layer of what it could look like. So let's say I have a folder for character design. I'll have the project name underscore the character's name underscore the context of what the file is underscore version. So here's an example, bhf01 underscore bonbon, that's a character's name underscore turnaround. So it's a turnaround sheet underscore the version type. And I'm going to write different examples. So this is episode one, but what if I'm going to reuse this design for other episodes? So instead of putting F01, I could just put BH, Barkhouse, underscore guns, that's a character's name, underscore expressions, indicating this is an expression sheet, underscore version type, V3, V2, it depends. And when it comes to characters and backgrounds, which I'm going to talk about, it's not necessarily shot specific. You can actually reuse these for, you know, multiple shots. So backgrounds, for example, I usually have the project name. I'll put the background name, the context, so whether it's line art, whether it's finished art, and of course the version. If you wanted to go the extra mile, you could actually put BG in the file name or in character design, you could put character in the file name or car, C-H-A-R, just to keep things super organized. So again, it's up to you. I just came up with this naming convention on the spot. So yeah. And then next, you're going to want to think about bookkeeping. So here's an example. I have a sheet that indicates my shots, the shot numbers, maybe a little bit of description. So it's just easier for me to visualize what shot it is and tick boxes that indicate the stages. So rough animation till tie down to clean up just so that I can keep track of the status or the progress of this project. And just so that I know what shots need work, what shots are done and what parts I missed out. And here's another table where I indicate how many drawings there are, how long it is, how many frames there are, because stuff like this will also determine the time and cost needed for the shot in case I hire other people. When I'm researching artists that I follow, I usually make a table to have their names, what kind of animation they specialize in, and a link to their portfolio and website. Again, depends how you want to use this bookkeeping system. And then they're saving multiple versions because sometimes you might want to keep an old version around just in case you want to go back to it and there's many ways you could label a version so here's a example of all my renders for the dusk slight short and there's multiple versions and edits of the short featuring the date of when it was rendered so it helps me keep track of how old it is when it was rendered and the stage it's at now you could do version numbers so you could just put v2 or v3 or v50 since the date is already encrypted in that metadata so yeah, I think things like folder organization, naming conventions, bookkeeping, these are all important when it comes to a production that's ambitious as an animated short or an animation production, regardless of what it is. And again, this can apply to other forms of media. But sometimes it's kind of hard to see how to organize those folders when you can't really see what that project is or the foundation for it. So it really comes down to three things in my opinion. The first one is experience. So the more projects you do, the more you learn from your mistakes and the more you try to find solutions to make that workflow better. The next is experimentation, trying out something that's kind of new to you and seeing how you can work with that and kind of customizing your own workflow to your own liking, but still keeping things easy to follow. And the third one is having some form of foundation. So a foundation is like something to work off of. So usually, I'll storyboard it in thumbnail form and then I'll use that thumbnail to make an actual storyboard timed out to an animatic. So this is where I can finally see how many shots there are, the type of shots, the layout, and then make folders and form a system based on those shots. And the reason why I want to talk about organization is because in a lot of my previous personal projects, it was lacking. It was something that I personally underestimated and it has caused me so much trouble and issue. I have a lot of weaknesses in other places in my creative ventures, but I felt like this was a big one to talk about because for me, it was such a big impact on my work. Anyways, that's all, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.